find what it is I should know. Cause it's just a matter of time. But you'll reawaken your mind. Oh, come with me. Come to know and find out what is true. Then you'll know what's in store just for you. No more living a lie. I can look to the sky and say, I'm reawakening mine. Come to know and find out what is true. Then you'll know what's in store just for you. No more living a lie. I can look to the sky and say, I'm reawakening my Greetings and welcome to Office Hours with Dr. G. This is a very special segment, very serious subject, a press conference that involves a very serious topic. I am not going to give a lot of introduction. Just want to let you know that tonight the information that is coming forth is of a timely manner and we are in a crisis in that we must come together, unify and correct a lot of mis and dis- disinformation. With that, I'd like to welcome to Office Hours with Dr. G, Lamont Maurice L at all, uh, who will discuss facts over emotions equal truth, Moorish Americans and citizens of the United States of America. Welcome back to Office Hours with Dr. G. For some reason, I guess the universe wanted to hear the reawakening minds thing too. So we got a little bit of both because it is about reawakening the minds of our people. And thank you so much um, for coming, Consulate General, for coming, you and all of the members of your uh, consulate to be with us tonight to talk about a very timely and serious serious matter, timely manner um, that all of us need to listen and figure out our path forward. So with that, Consul General, I turn it over to you. Let me see, I'm not, I can't hear, we can't hear you brother, um, Majesty Kadar Bey, you're, you're um, muted. Test, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Thank you so much. Good evening. Thank you for tuning in for this press conference. We will be addressing the state of foreign relations and intercourse between Moorish Americans and the citizens of the United States of America. I'm Majesty Kadar Bey. I hold the office of Consul of Morocco, Maglib Al Asso, at the Oregon State Republic. For all those who may not be aware uh, of the Arabic term, Maglib al Asl simply means Morocco, the forest, the furthest west. This term is said in order to distinguish and exercise constant jurisdiction from that of the consulate general of the king of Morocco, which is also a part of the Moroccan empire. You will be hearing from the office of the consulate general of Morocco, Maglib al Asl, which includes Adil Zakat Zadid Bey and Lamont Maricel. Adil Zakat Zadid Bey holds the office of Vice Consul of Morocco, Maglib al Asl. He will be addressing the international controversy that took place on July 3rd, 2021, which involves Jamal Talib Abdullah Bey and some of the members of the organization known as the Rise of the Moors and several foreign European colonists acting as police officers of the private de facto corporation entity, Massachusetts State Police Department. This event also includes Lamont Maurice L who was also on the phone with Jamal and several members of the police the 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 police department at Massachusetts uh, State Police Department in order to exercise consular jurisdiction for the protection of Jamal and several members of 
Rise of the Moors organization. In addition, Vice Consul Adil will address the diversity of citizenship between Moorish American nationals and citizens of the United States of America. And most importantly, the misrepresentation and slander of our Moorish Americans, nationals by the false color allegations of several foreign police men and representatives of the private foreign de facto corporation entity named Massachusetts State Police Department and Southern Poverty Law Center, as well as the anchor men and anchor women of the several foreign news media companies. Following Vice Consul Adil will be Lamont Maurice L, who holds the office of Consul General of Morocco, Maghrib Alasso. He will be given a statement of the international controversy which took place at, on July 3rd, 2021 from firsthand knowledge and experience. The Consul General Lamont Maurice L will speak on the events occurred that occurred on June 17th, 2021, near the corporate Charles County, Maryland, State Republic, which includes the successful release of our Moorish National, Jabbar Abdul L. Abdul L from unlawful imprisonment and which caused a stalemate of human trafficking and uh, colonial operations done by the foreign members of the representatives of the private foreign de facto corporation known as the District Court of Charles County, the Charles County Sheriff Department, the Charles County Detention Center, the Office of the State's Attorney for Charles County, and the State of Maryland. We encourage the public to uh, visit enforcetheconstitution.org forward slash consular dash court dash cases. Once there, you'll be able to click on traffic courts and habeas corpus cases, tra traffic cases and habeas corpus cases. There you will be able to follow the paper trail that will include the certified order issued from the consular officer of Morocco Consular Court at the Maryland State Republic, which caused the release of Jabbar uh, Abdul Adu El and the unconstitutional traffic case to be dismissed with prejudice for a lack of jurisdiction and fraud. There are also two videos uh, on the habeas corpus page, which the public is encouraged to, to watch. So do your research, do your investigation, and you can start there. I now present Vice Consul Adil Zakat Sadid Bay. Thank you, Madam Speaker Daw. It's my honor and greetings to everyone. I wish to bring your attention to the importance of addressing specific details relating to the international events that took place on July 3rd, 2021. On July 3rd, 2021, at 619 a.m., I received a phone call from Consul General Lamont Maurice L, who informed me about his contact with Jamal, which began at 3.56 a.m. Lamont stated he witnessed Jamal on a live video stream on the YouTube channel, quote unquote, Wise of the Moors, making a verbal plea to an unidentified policeman of the foreign Massachusetts, asserting that he, Jamal, and the members of his association have a treaty with the alleged government of the Massachusetts State Police. Jamal appeared to be alluding to the United States of North America. While speaking, Jamal was pointing to the Moroccan flag being held by two members of his organization while standing in the middle of the highway referred to as I-95. Lamont stated he observed at the end of the live video, Jamal announced his telephone number to a distant unidentified policeman of foreign Massachusetts State Police in efforts to establish communication between the two parties. Lamont further stated he then uh, Lamont further stated he then proceeded to make contact in efforts to give consular assistance according to Article of the Treaty of Peace and Article 20 of the Treaty of Peace and Friendship 
1836 between the United States of North America and the Moroccan Empire in order to settle what appeared to be a dispute between Jamal and the representatives of the foreign Massachusetts State Police Department. Lamont, Lamont further informed me that when he made contact with Jamal, he asked Jamal if he would like to invoke his treaty right to consular jurisdiction so that he, Lamont, can provide the necessary assistance and make contact with the necessary chain of command with the foreign Massachusetts State Police Department. According to the statements made by Lamont, Jamal agreed to consular assistance and Lamont then instructed Jamal to declare to the unidentified policeman that he is invoking his treaty rights to consular jurisdiction, which Jamal did. At that point, Lamont stated, and he proceeded to contact the representatives of the Massachusetts State Police Department and spoke with several representatives, which included three males purported to be lieutenants between 4.42 and 6.07 a.m. Lamont will provide details regarding this involvement, his involvement in this international incident momentarily. I now want to be addressing the diversity of citizenship between the Moroccan, the Moorish American nationals, and the citizens of the United States, and the misrepresentation of our Moorish American nationality done by several foreign hybrid European colonists and stateless persons subjects coming under the classification of U.S. citizenship within purview of the unconstitutional 14th Amendment. A couple of points to be made aware and very clear for the record. One, the fraudulent misrepresented designation, quote unquote, sovereign citizens does not and cannot apply to Moorish American nationals for the term, quote unquote, sovereign citizens dilute to a fictitious entity of the de facto 14th Amendment and is an, also an oxymoron statement. Two, Moorish American nationals are in harmony with the ancient principles of their ancient foremothers and forefathers and are not anti-government, quote unquote, for all citizens of the human race are recognized throughout the world in a public and political form by way of international treaties, constitutions of which Moors are recognized as quote unquote known, known parties in the Treaty of Peace and Friendship of 1786, 1787, superseded by the 1836 Treaty of Peace and Friendship between the United States of North America and the Moroccan Empire. So with regards to the diversity of citizenship, nationals upon a political forum must be identified as known parties. So in harmony to the statements that were made, which we are cl clearly dis uh, making the distinction as that sovereign citizens do not apply and is not a designation to any nation whatsoever. So it also deludes to the 14th Amendment status under the Black Codes, which is unconstitutional in accordance to the congressional records. Proof of this statement will be coming from the congressional records, Proceedings and Debates of the 90th Congress, First Session, Volume 113, Part 12, held on June 12, 1967 to June 20th, 1967, pages 15309 to 16558. And I will direct your attention to, on this document of the Congressional Records, page 1564, 15641, the 14th Amendment is unconstitutional. The purpose of purported 14th Amendment to the United States Constitution is and should be held to be ineffective, invalid, null, void, and unconstitutional. The proposed 14th Amendment was rejected by more than one-fourth of all the states then in the Union, and it was never ratified by three-fourths of all the states in the Union, according to Article 5. Also, for the following reasons, one, the joint resolution proposing said amendment was not submitted to the adopted to be to or adopted by a constitutional Congress. Article 1, Section 3, and Article 5 of the U.S. Constitution. Two, the joint resolution was not submitted to the president for his approval, Article 1, Section 7. So according to these documents here, which you can find in the congressional records, this is proof that clearly identifies that sovereign citizens is and cannot be attached to a national or nationality or the identity of national people. It is also, again, a colorful, fictitious construct, which will be constructed within the, the, uh, the guise of the 14th Amendment, which therefore we are proving that is unconstitutional. So for any so-called 
media outlet or any person that would make the statement that Moorish Americans are considered sovereign citizens are committing a treaty violation by denationalizing it. So what I will continue to do now is I would turn this over to Council General Lamont Maurice L so he can fill you in with the details as pertains to the communication that he had with Jamal and the foreign Massachusetts State Police Department. Thank you. Good evening and thank you. I would like to speak on the international controversy that took place on July 3rd, 2021 and shed light on some of the colonial operations and genocide against the Aboriginal and indigenous Moorish Americans that are taking place here at the Maghrib Al-Aqsa, Morocco, the furthest west, which we all know today as North America. On July 3rd, 2021, at approximately 2.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, I was made aware of a live video stream titled Peaceful on the YouTube channel belonging to the organization called Rise of the Moors. As I tuned in, I witnessed Jamal Tarib Abdullah Bey speaking with an unidentified person uh, purporting to be a policeman of the private foreign de facto corporation known as Massachusetts State Police. Jamal has previously declared himself to be a Moorish American national in several other YouTube videos. I noticed in the video that Jamal was standing in the uh, middle of the highway on I-95 North near mile marker 54, excuse me, 57.4 at the Massachusetts State Republic jurisdiction, along with two other members of the organization known as Rise of the Moors. Both of the two members were holding the Moroccan flag. In the video, Jamal announced to the unidentified policeman that they are not anti-government and that their nation, while pointing to the Moroccan flag, has a treaty with the government of the unidentified policeman. Jamal also announced that he and his members were being extra careful as to not violate the federal laws of the United States. Jamal then asserted that there were about 12 police vehicles on the scene while directing his camera to the vehicles in the front and rear of where he and his members were located. He also asked for the viewers to call the local news media to help bring awareness to the present situation. Jamal also claimed that he and his members have identified themselves with documentation given to the policeman. Later in the same video, Jamal claimed that there were men loading their firearms in the woods while you can hear in the background one of the men holding the Moroccan flag announced that they were foreign nationals and that the police were in violation of the constitution. A, uh, another member of the Rise of the Moors organization claimed that one of the policemen were po pointing their loaded sniper rifle directly at him. And he asked the policeman for a lieutenant to be present on the scene so that they can request an audience with him or her. Later in the video, I noticed that there were more members uh, 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 that were affiliated with Jamal and the other two uh, members that I mentioned earlier. Jamal announced that the pol uh, police would get Jamal announced to the police if they would get a lieutenant to speak with them. Jamal then yelled his telephone number to the several policemen that, uh, excuse me, so that the lieutenant would contact him on his cell phone. At that time, I determined that I was witnessing an international controversy between Moorish Americans and citizens of the United States of America and that the Moorish Americans were in danger. At 3.56 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, I made contact with Jamal via the, uh, the phone number he provided in the video and I identified to him who I was and the office I represent. I also asked him if he would like for me to exercise consular jurisdiction over the present international controversy in order to ensure that the treaty obligations in the Treaty of Peace and Friendship of 1836 
between the United States of North America and the Moroccan Empire are upheld and enforced? And he said, yes. From 3.56 a.m. to 1.09 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, I spoke with Jamal, various lieutenants, and personnel of the Foreign Corporate Massachusetts State Police and a male and female of the Rise of the Moors organization. When speaking to the lieutenants, I identified myself and my involvement in the international controversy, which was to exercise consular jurisdiction over Jamal and the members of the Rise of the Moors organization in order to ensure their safety and to make sure that their treaty rights are upheld and not violated. Jamal also invoked his treaty rights to consular jurisdiction and introduced me to the lieutenant as the consul general of Morocco while on the telephone. The lieutenants confirmed my position and began to speak with me about their side of the incident. During our conversations, and on the various YouTube videos, Jamal can be seen, began, uh, began to identify himself, excuse me, Jamal began to identify the policemen and lieutenants of the former Massachusetts State Police as officers and requested that he and his members be given a summons to come to court so that they can peacefully leave and come to court at a later date. At that point, I was unable to continue to exercise consular jurisdiction over the international controversy due to Jamal verbally abandoning his treaty rights to consular jurisdiction, whether knowingly or unknowingly, by announcing the several policemen to be officers, which puts them in office over Jamal and his estate by appointment. Thus and therefore, they uh, Jamal uh, uh, whether he knew or not, um, abandoned his treaty right to consular jurisdiction. At 1.09 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, I spoke with a male and female member of the Rise of the Moors organization, um, and I'm going to keep their uh, identity uh, 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 and, and not reveal it due anonymous. to, um, yes, anonymous due to uh, their right to privacy and with honor to their right of privacy. So uh, as I was saying, I spoke with a male and female member of the Rise of the Moors organization, who then informed me that Jamal and the other members at the scene was kidnapped by the policemen. I then explained to them the conversations I had with Jamal and the lieutenants and why I was halted from exercising consular jurisdiction over the matter. I then offered them, the, the two uh, members, consular advice on what they can still do to assist Jamal. The members said they understood and would keep me up to date with the situation. And uh, at a later time, uh, the members, the two members text me and said that there was another Moorish American that was competent and that they would be using his services which ultimately meant they did not uh, want the service of consular jurisdiction to be exercised by myself and the consulate. From the principles of controversy, whenever there is a controversy or dispute, the first issue that needs to be addressed in law is the identification and status of all parties. From what I witnessed on the several YouTube videos, I can give a general description of the parties involved. Based on immediate assumption and the information provided to me by Jamal, Jamal and the members of the Rise of the Moors organization are all generally Moors or Moorish Americans that were traveling on the highway and flying the Moroccan flag as their signal of communication to be known under the law of flags in accordance with article 4 of the treaty of peace and friendship between the united states of america or not united states of north america and the moroccan empire the police and representatives of the private foreign de facto corporation known as 
Massachusetts State Police are foreign Occidental European colonists being corporate stock citizens of the defunct corporate United States who are occupying land that is not their own by way of colonial operations. Those among the foreign Occidental European colonists that were allegedly exercising the ju jurisdictional powers of government on the land as constitutional officers can only be valid and lawful by way of treaty and constitutional law and not color of law. Therefore, the international dispute between the two parties was to be decided by consul in a consular court and venue pursuant to the Treaty of Peace and Friendship of 1836 between the United States of North America and the Moroccan Empire and pursuant to Article 3, Section 2 of the Constitution for the United States of North America. We, being my officers and myself, have not received a deposition statement from Jamal or any of the members of the Rise of the Moors organization on all things that took place. Nevertheless, for informational purposes, by principle of law, there was no immediate note that Jamal and members of the Rise of the Moors organization violated any treaty or constitution. And I'll stop here for a second and explain. This is basically the point of colonial operations. Whenever Aboriginal and indigenous Moors are exercising their right to travel, they are, their rights that is, are deprived under color of law, which is known as traffic law. And according to the color of law known as traffic law, in order for you to travel, you have to have permission from a foreign corporation known as or styled as state of, for an example, state of Massachusetts, state of Maryland, state of Georgia, et cetera. And they misconstrue, and when I say they, I'm talking about the representatives of such corporations, misconstrue travel to be driving on purpose. Although it is clearly known among all scholars around the world and all people around the world that know how to read, that the word driver is a commercial word and it has nothing to do with travel, all right? Continuing, oh, and also I wanna mention that the right of the people to keep and bear arms, which shall not be infringed, is a universal right known around the world. That universal right is guaranteed to be secured under the second amendment. Thus and therefore, there is no requirement for a gun permission, also known as a gun permit or a gun license to compel the people to such instrument is a deprivation of rights under color of law because the second amendment clearly states that the right of the people to be uh, 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 to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed, but to compel a people to have a driver's license, I mean, excuse me, a gun license is to infringe on the right to keep and bear arms. And that is stir decisis, which means it has already been decided by we, the people. And the preamble, just to make uh, clear, we, the people of the United States, as it is uh, written in the uh, present constitution for the United States of North America, is referring to the people in the Continental Congress. The Continental Congress consisted of 35 Aboriginal and Indigenous sovereign Moors and 20 foreign hybrid European colonists that represented the states or the colonies at that time 
And in the Continental Congress of 1774, 1776, as well as 1781, under the Articles of Confederation. 